Hey guys, so check this thing out. This is a Kawasaki mule that has been transformed into pretty much the ultimate hunting vehicle. So the guy that had this before put a crane, lift crane up here with a winch on the top. He has this pulley on the other end. So he can basically pull deer all the way out of the woods. He can hook a rope to the deer and then hook it to this crane and then pull it up out of the woods and then uh, either put it on that rack or in the back bed here. So this crane is bolted to a pretty thick sheet of metal here. Has a hydraulic jack that can lift it up and it can also extend out pretty far. It has this big old beefy bumper with all kinds of connectors and a receiver hitch. Got some winch controls up here. Also what's pretty cool is this crane will move all the way around, even to over the front of the vehicle. So I'd say, have to say that is pretty awesome. There's a lot of uses that you could use for this. He's got the gun racks everywhere. These uh, blinds roll down. It has a metal cover on the roof. Has this basically blind or a shooting rack where he has foam so he can rest his gun. Has this big old light bar up there. So this cover right here lifts up. It's got all kinds of storage down in here. So this thing is pretty awesome. However, it doesn't run. What do you think, buddy? You like it? So the guy said this thing was sitting for a long time, but it did run before. That doesn't do anything at all. Sometimes it will pop off, but I mean, it's rare. I'll try and pull the choke out. So it looks like it has 824 hours on it. So he did say it sat for a long time, and I'm guessing that the carburetor's just clogged up or the gas is bad. We've got some wires disconnected here. They um, go into this battery box. It's got all the batteries on the winches and stuff. This thing's actually pretty light too. It's balanced really well. So this machine comes equipped with your Kawasaki twin cylinder FD 620D. This is exactly the same engine that's in my John Deere garden tractor that I just got. But before we get working on this thing, let's go ahead and give it a much needed bath because this thing is filthy. bit cleaner let's go ahead and start working on this thing so I actually just noticed that this thing 
has like three or four winches on it. There's one way back in here. And then we have this one here. And then we also have the ones on the boom crane. All right, let's go ahead and get this carburetor taken off and get it cleaned up. That, that's a coolant going through here and that cools the carburetor. There's our carburetor. Alright, let's get this carb taken apart. These are pretty neat. I haven't seen those before. I guess it's some kind of check valve, a little check valve for the uh, choke here, I believe. Yeah, this is the choke. So I guess that lets a little bit of air through these, but it won't let air go back. A little tiny valve right in there. bit of gunk in there. Doesn't look too too bad. There's definitely some stuff that will probably clog it up in there. Guess this brass fitting just pulls straight out. Now, well, that was in pretty bad shape there. I believe it was leaking before. You can see all the remnants of it.
Now let's get all these jets out of here. I did turn these in and they were set to three turns from I guess the factory so we'll just reset them at that. Little tiny things. I'm sure those can get clogged up really easily. And there's also some little tiny jets down in here. All right, let's go ahead and throw these ports in the Viver ultrasonic cleaner. You can see these ports are really dirty, so let's see what they look like afterwards. a different cleaner this time usually I use simple green but I tried this like purple power or something similar looks like the cleaner kind of changed the color of them though I'm not sure I really like that so much The little jets and everything. Now let's start getting it put back together. Then we have our smaller jets and they go to the carburetor here. Alright, we got our needle and spring here. These were installed from the factory three turns out so we just want to make sure that we get that the same Wow, that chill filter got a bunch of junk in it. Fuel pump. All right. new fuel filter. And we got a new fuel pump here. Looks right.
All right, our fuel pump is good to go. Get this carburetor installed here. This is just a vent line here. Okay guys, we might have a problem here. See if you can hear what I'm hearing. There might be a, a rat inside there. Is that a rat or is it just making that noise? Let's take this little cover off and just make sure there's no rat in there. is trashed. Might be able to clean that one up, but you know, the foam's still good on the sides. I'm thinking it was just a bell squeak because I'm not hearing any mice. sounded like a mouse inside the belt, but um, I guess the belt was just squeaking a little bit. Let's go ahead and get these valve cover seals replaced because it's definitely leaking on them. And that's a pretty common issue with these plastic uh, valve covers. We'll go ahead and check the um, valve clearances also while we got these off. Go ahead and see what these plugs look like. It's a little white, so it might be running a little lean. We'll uh, go ahead and pull this other plug out. That one also, I mean that, that one's a little bit better. What you want is a nice tan color. So I'm going to try and spin this engine over to top dead center. That way it will take the pressure off both of these valves. So I'll just try and spin it over with the starter. Just try and be pretty careful doing it. And I'll verify where the piston's at. And I can see the piston is all the way up at the top. We'll go ahead and check those valves. Alright, we got the valves adjusted and they are perfectly in spec. Let's get these valve cover gaskets replaced.
All right, let's go ahead and get the oil changed on this thing. Just noticed I got a crazy colony of mushrooms growing under this thing. That thing's pretty wild. If you know what kind of mushrooms these are, post it in the comments. oil filter on here. Maybe it's never been changed before. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had one this tight. Alright. There we go. Looks like it might be the original oil filter on here. Spark plugs. Here's what you need. So before I go trying to start this thing up, I want to uh, check this air filter. I can't pull the cover off though because this bin right here that's holding all the batteries and everything. It's in the way and it's bolted down, so we'll have to go ahead and unbolt it. Air filter looks pretty decent. We got everything buttoned back up so let's see if this thing's gonna crank up and and run so it seems to be running and idling pretty good but well, we have this god-awful screeching noise that sounds like a pissed-off mouse in there. So, it sounds like it's coming from the belt, you know, inside the belt here. So, I guess we're going to have to take the cover off and um, see what's going on in there. Alright, let's see what's causing this crazy sound in the belt area.
we get this thing out of here. So the belt and everything doesn't look bad at all. It's got a genuine Kawasaki belt on it. There is a little bit of like hairs or dust kind of caught in here. Might try and clean some of that out. That could be causing the sound. I'm just going to use some brake clean and kind of clean some of these parts without getting it on the belt. You really don't want to use any kind of oils on this because it will um, fling right off and it will also just collect more of this uh, belt dust and grit on it. So you kind of want to clean it off and then make sure you dry it really well. So I'm going to use some of this dry lube and this stuff won't attract dirt or dust and it's safe to use on this and it will basically keep everything kind of so it will slide freely. Well guys, I actually don't even think this is the belt causing the noise. Let me show you. I'm gonna, I got some carburetor cleaner which is flammable. I'm going to spray it right here on the intake gasket. I think that's where the noise is coming from. So when I spray it, it should rev up. Oh yeah, we got a leak around this gasket somewhere. That's what's causing it to, uh, that's what's causing the noise. And I think it's also causing it to kind of run a little poorly also. See, I can spray that and dry it off spray a little bit more and it should rev back up a little bit. See how it revved up? Yeah, we got a uh, we got an intake leak. All right, let's see what we did wrong here. So we definitely got some kind of air leak. So I can actually kind of see fuel in this middle opening right there, and that should be sealed off. I'm thinking I didn't do the best job of getting this whole gasket off. It was actually really hard to scrape off. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just take this whole intake tube off and replace the gaskets going on each side, and that way I can clean this up a lot easier with it being off the motor. I'm also thinking some of our issues coming from this gasket that I got in the kit. I really don't like this material. It kind of rubs off and I think it can uh, allow for air leaks. You can see it's already separating kind of right there. So I think I'm going to just make a gasket out of some better material also. So those gaskets probably weren't in the best shape either. So I think it's good to replace those. You can see that the coolant also flows through these uh, intake ports here. So we have our intake ports and then our coolant flows through here. And this is where our thermostat is. The coolant and everything looks good. Thermostat looks good in there too. If you do this, make sure you're careful not to get any coolant down these passages. I think I can see a little bit down there. So, I'll stick a rag and make sure I can get all that get all that cleaned out. And I think we're good to go.
hopefully this thing doesn't leak now. guys well we got it all put back together if you guys are looking for a really good light like a work light a company called Claris sent them to me and these are by far one of my favorite lights I've ever used I've left this thing on pretty much all day and the battery just lasts forever so you send these lights in this cool little bag here with the charger and everything there's a couple different modes on it Got the dimmest and all the way to the brightest, which is super bright. This thing is blinding bright. You can also change the color temperature on it. See, there's different colors. Sounds like a super bright. There's a lot of companies that send me stuff to pretty much promote on my channel. And I only want to promote products that I really like and that I'll actually use. And this is a... Uh, one of my favorite lights so I'll try and post a uh, link and a coupon code in the description if you're interested but I really like these lights so check them out if you want to also I have this like little red light on here it's pretty neat it's a couple of different functions but I like how easy this light is to use it's just simple and it just the battery lasts forever on it the simple USB charger and a power port if you want to charge something out of it. Oh, and one other thing. These things are super durable and completely waterproof. The plastic on these things are just super tough. I also have a magnet on the bottom and a clip. Very nice to use. Well, all right. Let's see if it starts up. What do you think, buddy? Think it'll start up? That thing just cranked right up. You wanna go for a ride, buddy? You go for a little night ride? Yeah? You wanna go for a ride? <laughs>
ahead and get these uh, my cables hooked back up. Okay, so I'm going to show how this whole crane system is supposed to work. It's mainly for hunting. It can be used for other things like lifting stuff up, but the main purpose is for hunting. So basically, you drive with it in this position here, connected to the front bumper. If you shoot a deer, you can swing it around and hook a rope to the deer and hook it to the crane or the winch, whatever. And then you can continuously pull the deer. Once you get the deer, you can lift it up with a crane and skin it, clean it, whatever you need to do. So I'll kind of show how it's supposed to go. We'll basically take our crane.
looking at it like it's a big snake or something. <laughs> it's okay, bud. It's okay. Scared of it, buddy? Oh, you got a leaf on your mouth. Alright, so once you get it to this point, you can actually lift it up just like a regular engine hoist jack. And there you go. You can lift it up as high as you need. It goes probably twice that high, but that's plenty of room to uh, clean a deer or whatever you need to do. So. How bright just one of those just one of those clar claris i don't know how to pronounce it um look how bright one of those lights are that thing is a beast I guess this is gonna do it for this video I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and fixing this and taking it for a little ride it's definitely not as cool as diesel creeks new crane but if you're a hunter this thing fits the bill just perfect so this thing's a lot of fun and it is running amazingly well but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this video and I will see you guys on the next one Y'all take care. Later.